Hi, this is Roger Conrad. I'm editor of Portfolio 2020. What I want to talk about today is just uh, basically a few general comments on the market and relate those to our top holdings, which are in the uh, Portfolio 2020, uh, which you can access from the, from the website. Basically, there are four components of that portfolio. Uh, the red, white, and blue and uh, um, Beyond Our Borders segments contain larger companies that are tacking uh, to the changes of, of the 20, uh, 21st century. They're really locked into transcendent trends uh, that in, ensure growth over time, just as they were in the 20th century. They're dominant companies then. They'll continue to be dominant companies going forward. The other two segments, the um, um, uh, with one involving uh, cutting edge technology, these are companies uh, primarily smaller that are engaged in very, very much breakthrough areas that uh, could see them really multiply value over time. Um, and I think these are, again, our, our highest potential plays in there. And then we have our uh, materials and metals segment, which are, um, uh, again, a play on one of the major transcendent trends of the 21st century, which is growth in Asia and the tremendous uh, expansion of infrastructure there. Uh, so put taken together, these are companies that are uh, uh, locked in to capitalize on uh, substantial growth in the 21st century as uh, as we move forward, some are larger than the others, and uh, the larger ones, again, are probably the best suited for more conservative investors, whereas the smaller ones are probably more suited for those who want to have the potential to hit a home run. But all of them, again, locked into these uh, long-term trends, and I think they've proven that um, over the past uh, 16 months or so um, as since we've had this portfolio, which have been some very, very difficult times, some very volatile times for the market, but all these things have remained uh, uh, pretty much on an, on an up note uh, going forward. Um, you know, relating this uh, to, the, um, to the market situation today, I think people have become a little bit more worried about, uh, and, and, or just as they have been, about uh, the economy, where things are going, are we really recovering, uh, or are some of these uh, remaining uh, potential boondoggles like commercial real estate really threatening uh, uh, growth going forward and can they really upset the market. I think, uh, you know, to, to some extent these are uh, very much justified. We are moving into a period of seasonal strength here in the market, uh, which should help things out. But generally, uh, we do remain at risk to, uh, to, to, to shock to events and, and the, the, the collapse of, uh, in Dubai, I think, is a, a pretty good uh, indication of, of how things can really uh, come out of the blue. On the other hand, what happened in Dubai is pretty much a symptom of the last, what caused the last, uh, last uh, major fallout, which was in uh, late 2008, and that is over leverage. Um, certainly, probably many of you have read the articles about uh, uh, underground uh, hotels and uh, underwater hotels and uh, um, uh, wholly enclosed ski resorts in the middle of the desert. Uh, certainly, these are things that are done often with lots of leverage. Uh, they may not make a whole lot of sense as investments uh, at some extent, but they're done when people feel very, very flush. Um, obviously, now that we've seen uh, some major retracement in that country, some of these projects may not even come off. Um, and uh, there's certainly some shakeouts uh, to, to go there. Same is true in, in commercial real estate in the United States and, and in many other areas where leverage has remained very high and, and the principals are just sort of hanging on by their fingernails even a year into uh, what could be considered a, a recovery. I think there will be more, uh, more damage. There's going to be more, uh, more rotten limbs to fall from, from the tree before things really begin to uh, blossom and flower again. Uh, but again, these companies that we have in, in the portfolio, they're not in that camp. Uh, they're not over leveraged. They're not leveraged to trends of the past. Um, and in fact, again, they've proven their ability to make it through very tough times with their performance over the past uh, 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 16 months or so. So, um, you know, if you're looking for things to buy right now uh, and things that, uh, you know, will pr allow you to participate, in uh, market recovery next year without overly exposing you to some of these boondoggles that, uh, that may come down the pike, I think these are the places to look. And again, if you're conservative, look at, uh, look at the larger companies. If you're more ag aggressive, look at the smaller ones, but all of them uh, we have a tremendous amount of confidence in. Um, if you look at the earnings reports, which I uh, followed up on in, uh, in an article, uh, Portfolio 2020, and uh, it's on the website right now, you'll see that they performed well in the third quarter. And again, I think there's no better portent uh, for better things ahead than, than good earnings in tough times. So that's all I have to say today. Again, thanks for tuning in. Look forward to chatting with you next time.